This is Andrea Young here with Chuck Boyk, and today we have a special guest joining us, Demetrius Nicodemus. Hello. Hi. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. You did. It's it's very funny. Some people struggle with it. Most people like go like this. That's like in the Bible. And I'm like, yes, it is. And they're like, any relation? I'm like, I don't know. Hmm, but, that would be weird if you yeah. didn't know. But. That and the secrets in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you go by anything else? Or? Um, <laughs> most people call me D. Uh, I can always tell like where somebody knows me, where somebody met me in my life by what they call me. Uh, when I was growing up, people called me Meech. And so anybody who calls me Meech has known me from kindergarten all the way up through probably college. And then when I was in the Navy, they called me Nick. So anybody who calls me Nick, I know, knew me when I was in the military. And now it's D, and that's when I just realized people are just too damn lazy to say Demetrius. <laughs> yeah, uh, was that from the pandemic on? Like, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, okay, so probably, let's say 2010 on, Gotcha. All right. Well, I will say that I first kind of knew about you from the radio on 92.5. So you're ready to go back in right? time. I know. That was like, God, God, it seems like a lifetime ago. It really does. How long were you uh, with 92.5? 10 years. Well, that Was it Morning Rush? It was from, I was on every iteration of the morning show <laughs> for 10 years, like regardless of the name change. From Andrew Z in the morning to the morning rush. Okay. I think that's when I started listening was the morning rush time. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you're doing now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what am I doing now? A lot. <laughs> it's a loaded question. It is. Because but... my, my instinct is to say I'm finding myself. Right? Like that. Like that is what I'm doing. I am looking to rediscover my passion. I think that's fantastic. So what does that mean? What are you doing? It just means like going back to the things that brought me joy, you know, like stand up and radio, doing those things. Those things that like when, when I got done, I was tingling over, mm. you know, like I feel like when you, you do something and at the end of it, you get that tingle, right? Like you, you know, you've stuck something and it's just that tingle. That's your thing. Yeah. That's your. That's like your body going, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. If yeah. you've never had that tingle, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I agree. Yeah, and I think a lot of people say sports. You might get that. For me, I'm a nerd, so finding like a case that supports my argument, right? <laughs> I get right? that. Right, but you get that. Yeah. You get that tingle, and, then, and that's that thing that drives you to do it the next time. So do you have something right now that no. you're starting to get that? No. No. Okay. No. You know what? I was doing insurance and um, it was soul sucking. <laughs> like, and I, I'm not going to lie. If you're out there doing insurance and, that make, and, and you have that tingle, you're probably having a stroke. But I'm <laughs> telling you, you, you are doing something that God did not intend anybody. I mean, I feel like we describe insurance people as soul sucking sometimes. Oh my <laughs> god! Like, how do you wake up every day? That's yeah. why they pay those cats so much. Okay, but you were an agent. Yeah. So you sold insurance. Yeah, I sold insurance. I ran an agency. I hired people. I worked for Allstate for a little bit, where I was a, their new new agent leader for Southern Ohio, and uh, that was absolutely wretched. Wretched. So, are you going to get a lot of good comedy material off of being a, an insurance agent? Do you know you would think, but insurance isn't funny. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing funny about it, yeah. except the people. Well, I mean, in our world, we deal with insurance and insurance mm -hmm. um, adjusters all the time. And not to be too serious, but anything you would want people to know about when they're purchasing insurance or oh, what things they should Hands have. down. Make sure you're adequately covered. The biggest thing that people always assume, especially when they're buying homeowner's insurance, is that water backup and flood coverage are the same thing, and they're included. Sometimes they're not. You have to ask for that. And you also have to check your lim limits on that. Because some people will just give you 10 grand, and 10 grand for a flooded basement will get your carpet ripped out. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. And you did auto as well? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Absolutely. And uh, for auto insurance, legal is not covered. I want people to totally understand that. Just because you're legal to drive with the insurance that you have yes. doesn't mean that you are protected. Yes. 2550 will get you exactly what you're paying for, and that is barely anything. So if you hit somebody and you hurt somebody, don't think $50,000 is going to cover it. Because exactly. it covers $50,000, and then you're on the hook for everything else. Yep. So okay. make sure that you put as much money of the insurance company between you and a problem. I agree. I was actually just on the news this morning talking about that, and I was kind of pushing for uninsured or underinsured coverage just to protect yourself in the event. You yeah, know, people don't know. Hit skip, things you like know, that. It was always, there was always things that I would just add, period. Underinsured, and, I'm, and, and my thing is, you're not walking out of my office if you're getting auto insurance with anything under 100 and 300,000, mm -hmm. period. Because then something horrible happens. Yep, we see it on a daily basis. We agree with you. We always like to talk a little bit about background. So you're from Northwestern Ohio. Give us the short version of the Demetrius story. Born and raised in Toledo. Grew up on Central Avenue across from Woodlawn Cemetery. So did you hang out at the cemetery? Yes, I did. Night? Yes, I did. I would run. I would, I would run, which seems weird that you would exercise in a cemetery. But I would run through those those paths for like hours when I was a kid. All right, so we got running through the cemetery. Mm -hmm. What, what happens from there? <laughs> okay, so what happens from there is uh, Mount Vernon, McKinley, DeVoe Junior High, two years at St. Francis, two years at DeVilvis, two years at Ohio State, joined the Navy. So every two years you had to do something right, yeah, different? Right, Like It was like almost like I was in the worst relocation program ever. I just could not get my anything together. I was just like, no, they're going to move me again. And today your name is Pablo. <laughs> Damn it. I see a pattern happening. Two years. All yeah, right. I can't but, wait to hear the next two. And um, started doing comedy. How do you just start doing comedy? How does that You know that what's happen? funny? I was, going, I was going to school. I was going to college. And I was working at a comedy club as a bartender. And I don't know how many people know Billy Gardell, but he's on the show, Mike and Molly. He was on the show, Mike, he played the cop. Now he's on Bob Hart's Eyes of Show Love. Yeah. Uh, he was performing that week. And after the shows, all the staff and the comics get together, we have drinks and we get to tell stories. And he pulled me out into the lobby and he said, you were the funniest person I have ever met that has never been paid. Wow. And he called me every day for a month until I went up on stage. And I went up on stage. I had no material. I was slightly inebriated. <laughs> I made fun of a guy drinking frozen daiquiri. And I apologize to you, sir. <laughs> I really, if, if you probably really remember this, but, and I made fun of him for like 10 minutes. It was great. I got off the stage. The manager of the club was like, you got great stage presence, kid. <laughs> and then he says, now try writing some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm taking away is you're not a fan of frozen drinks. Or no. <laughs> do you know, and that was just the thing. He was just out there. He was on a date. And that was like the thing you do on a date. You, you buy a shareable frozen something with some whipped cream on the right. top and you lean in like Lady and the Tramp and you both <laughs> suck on the straw at the same time and you hope to have a moment. Yes. And I ruined that moment. And you ruined it. I totally okay. ruined that. He probably never orders shareable drinks ever, <laughs> ever again. Were you mostly a stand-up comedian in like Northwest Ohio? I traveled all over the country. Like everywhere. Toledo, Ohio, hands down, the hardest people in the world to make laugh, period. Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> you think people are like, no, New York audiences, anything. Here, people will tell you about yourself. The first time I think I did my first paid gig, 
I was emceeing at Connections. Okay. And um, after the show, everybody comes out of the, the showroom and they, they see the comics. They're all standing behind this counter. They shake hands. They buy their merchandise. And people tell them how great they are. And this old man comes out and he stops at the headliner and he goes, oh my God. Oh my God. I just, oh, you. <laughs> Just, oh, just the genius of you. and Just, I can't believe how you would come here and share your witty genius with us. And then he gets to the middle act and he's like, oh my God, you, you are on the verge of greatness, young sir. I just, <laughs> man, oh my God. And then he gets to me and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> ah, yeah. Right. It was just like the worst thing ever. Oh my goodness. But in saying that, I will also say that it was Toledo that gave me my first opportunity to be a headliner. Okay. Where at? At that same club. And I was sitting in the back and this girl I was seeing at the time wanted to see a hypnotist. And I was never a big fan. And so I wanted to see if the show was going to be any good. So I go to the club, sitting in the back, just drinking my Kool-Aid. <laughs> and right. and uh, there's probably like 40 people in the audience, and this guy's name is Jay Medicine Head. And uh, he can't hypnotize anybody. That's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> and so he gets mad, and he's like, they don't pay me enough to entertain these people. Throws the microphone on the stage and just storms off. And I'm sitting in the back like, oh my God. And then the manager of the club was like, I need you to close the show. No way. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, I need you to close the show. And I did probably like 50 minutes and it was just, oh my goodness. The best drug I've ever done in my life. What year? What are you thinking? What time frame? Oh. God, that would have been 96, 97. Okay, before things started going viral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? In yeah, space? <laughs> and you know, and what was so funny about it was the guy who booked the club called me the next day and he goes, he goes, so I guess you're a headliner now. That's fantastic. And from there it just took off or yeah. what? And then after that, I was just like closing rooms. So are you still doing any comedy today? I just started back. Anything coming up that we can look forward to? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 here's the really crazy part. is like, I'm, I'm doing comedy again, right? And so I got to go out to clubs. But now I'm at a point where I'm old. And like, I'm like, I'm just not driving that far. That is, uh, sorry. Uh, sun goes down. I got Matlock to watch. You got, no. You can't. Can we do a show at like 3.30? <laughs> like I got naps and things that I need to Chuck take. Chuck will probably be at that show. Exactly. Three and I'm, I'm like, man, let me just tell you. So how did you get on the radio? Once again, it, it goes to comedy. I was headlining. I was headlining the club here um, called Connections. And back in the day, when you were headlining, you had to do morning radio. So you would have to wake up at the, the ass crack of dawn on a Friday, and you would they would drive you around. And you would do all these morning radio shows so that people would come to the show. Um, Andrew's show was the first show that I was supposed to do. I get there, I get on, and I'm having so much fun, I don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, they like escort you out? Yeah, like you're supposed to do like five minutes. You know, you do your little segment, they interview you, they talk, blah, 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 you say thank you, I hope to see everybody at the show, and then you go. I was there for my 10, and then my 10 turned into 20, and then my 20 turned into the entirety of the show, wow. and because we were just having so much fun, it was just so much fun, and he asked me, he goes, do you live here? And I said, yeah, he goes, how? Have I never heard of you? <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm just, I'm on the road. And he was like, well, what, he goes, when you're not on the road, how would you like to just come in? And that was with Andrew Z. Mm -hmm. That turned into, wouldn't you like health insurance? 
<laughs> and I was like, I would love to be able to just run recklessly with scissors for once. Just like, I was like, yeah, I would really like some health insurance. And they offered me a contract. And then, you know, as people left, I was always the one who stayed. Like, it was always the people around me that they were changing. So how long do you think you were with Andrew Z or that radio station? I was with Kiss for 10 years. I was probably with Andrew for two of those years as my host changed. I was always there. It was never a question of, was I ever going to have a job? It was just the people around me. I thought I heard that you might be going back to radio. You thought you heard. That's very, you know what? It's very possible because you could have thought you heard it from me. <laughs> like, I think I may have posted something about, okay. like I made some weird mafia post, like you try to get out, but they keep pulling you back in. Like, but uh, yes. Okay. Yes, what I can am. you tell us? Andrew and I are doing a morning show. And it's going to be good regular morning radio again i just i don't know how else to describe it like because i don't want to hate on anybody yeah right I get it. like they're all out doing their thing they're doing their thing to the best of their ability uh i just think that there are some people who are doing their thing that aren't really serving the needs of this community the local, yeah so I was thinking, if you don't have a name, why don't you have it the Demetrius Show and then Little Letters with Andrew? Could you imagine him ever, <laughs> ever taking something smaller than somebody else? <laughs> that would never be his thing. He, the only reason he's lucky right now is because his name starts with A and mine is D. <laughs> but so, you'll both be in the heading. Yes. Andrew Z and Demetrius, and Demetrius in the morning, morning. September 19th. So who else is going to be on the show? So Steve, Steve Reamy. Uh, I, I will. The man who identifies as a man who enjoys the company of other men, Steve. And um, we have a female co-host. Her name is Marissa. Um, and then you will see like people who, there'll be some new people. We'll do some new segments. We're going to do a lot of spotlight on the community, oh. the talent that we have around here. That's great. Um, you know, the businesses that we have here. You know. Yeah, I love that. So you're not going to hear about, you know, companies that may be pushing stuff out of Detroit or, you know, a morning show that may be piped in from Atlanta. No, I appreciate that. I think that's what we need to hear because there is so much talent and new business coming up. I love this city so much. I have the skyline tattooed on my arm. <laughs> Somebody said to me once, they were like, once you do that, you never, you're never leaving. It is almost like some kind of voodoo thing. But Toledo always brings me back. You know, I always end up coming back here because this is, in my opinion, the most accurate mix of America that you are ever going to find. And what do you mean by that? I mean, there are people here who maybe lean a little red more than normal. And there are people who lean real, real blue more than normal. And, but we're all here. And somehow we make it work, right? We argue, we bitch, we moan, but we make it work here because this is, where else are we gonna go? Where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? You gonna move, you ain't going to, you ain't moving to the east side. We all know we're all afraid of the east side. But you know, so we have to make it work. Yeah, no, I agree. Huh. Well, we're all from Toledo, so apparently we've right? all figured out we better make it work yeah. here. Yeah, this is where all my stuff is. I don't want my stuff broken by crazy people on either side. And, and Duke likes it here, right? Yes, my dog. Yes, my dog does. Now, now tell the audience about your dog. Oh, my God. Okay. What's the best way? It is like walking up hurricane or, or or some kind of natural disaster. He is a big Staffordshire Terrier. So along with Duke, do you mm -hmm. have children? I do. You know? I do. I have a 30-year-old daughter. I have a 16-year-old son. I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old. 
So do they all get along or the age yeah, differences? Yeah. Um, my 16 year old and my seven year old are probably like the two tightest, but my 16 year old lives in North Carolina. So he comes home on holidays and he's dumb as fuck. Oh. Yes. He's, I love him to death. He's like my little, uh, all my kids are really, really smart. And I really, really appreciate that. That is just like something I lean very, I like take a lot of comfort in. Like when they, you ask them what they want to be, it's things like geologists or paleontologists or things like that. And I'm like, wow, not, not an astronaut amongst them. <laughs> not one. Not one of them says professional athlete. Ever. It's all like all things that make me feel pretty secure that they're going to be virgins until oh they really God. meet that special <laughs> song. <laughs> right? Demetrius, do you guys have any uh, fun trips this summer? Or? You know, this year is kind of like a... Like uh, been a weird year because like, I'm going through a divorce, and so trips have kind of like been a weird thing. Um, like it, it's almost like you try to keep it as normal as you possibly yeah. can, and but they're like, so why are we doing so much more fun stuff? Now? <laughs> I'm like, never you mind. These are gonna be great memories. You'll hold on to them and you'll love me more. Here, here's a pony. <laughs> Isn't it weird how we do that as parents? Like, it's the worst. It's the worst. And my seven year old is probably oh he's like probably the most brutal seven-year-old i've ever 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 seen like he's lucky he's so cute because i've come this close to punching him like he his cuteness has kept him from being punched a lot because he says some cutting things like i i was driving we were he was in the back seat and i'm driving him home and uh when we were talking about uh things that I've done first. I'm like, you're seven. I've done a lot of things that you haven't done. I've done them first. And he goes, I know one thing you haven't done first. And I was like, what? He goes, leave you. Mommy did that. Oh. And I was like, I was like, bro, 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 bro. Like, why would you even? And then he just looked at me and he was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. You can't do anything. The law protects me, buddy. He's like, I am covered in the cloak of justice. Yes. <laughs> All right. What's the week? Uh, it was hilarious, but it like it puts everything in perspective. You're just like, look at him. He's like, he's fine. He's fine. Oh, you gotta love kids. <laughs> All right. Well, if you don't mind, I have some rapid fire questions, and okay. we're just gonna burn through them. Yes, so, ma'am. What was your first job? First job, um, essay at Chi Chi's. Which, a as, I, as I look back at it now, was slightly racist. Um, but we were called service assistants, but they called us essays. <laughs> was this on Talmadge? Yeah. I worked mm-hmm. at Chi Chi's on Talmadge. Yep. I do not remember that. Yep. Bissel, bissel, bissel. Bissel, bissel, bissel. <laughs> they would send food back. People would send food back. It would be so funny. They'd be like, oh, this isn't it. And they'd just cover it in more sauce and send it back. <laughs> You're like, you didn't even make this again. You just covered it in more enchilada sauce. I do miss a good chee cheese though. Oh, I know. <laughs> Dude, the individual nacho was the bomb. What's your favorite dessert? Favorite dessert? Apple pie. A la mode? Was I, oh, I'm, I can't, no. No. You give me a, you give me a scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm paying for it. Oh. Like, I, my body is so lactose intolerant. Okay. It is, like, I feel like it, there's a lot of hate. Like, <laughs> like if lactose could take out a restraining order, it would just be like, hey, his body is just mean to me for no reason. Well, check that off. That was my next question. Are you lactose intolerant? <laughs> yes, I, I'm so intolerant. It would be, yes, it, I think it almost, almost, uh, like, waters on some kind of ism. What's your favorite type of weather? 75. 75 degrees, sunny, slight breeze. You got that down. Anything at 80. Because there's a point where then it's just hot. I don't care what anybody says. It's like it's beautiful in 80. I'm still sweating ass. <laughs> Not fun for me. What's your favorite type of music? Right now I'm really feeling country music. Oh. Right? Well, I feel like in the 
summer. It's a like it's a, it's a good but genre. but it's disarming when you're a person of color. <laughs> and, and you're just driving down the street with your windows down and people are like, is that Morgan Wallen? What the hell? Is is he okay? Is there somebody in there with you? What's your safe word? Say it. Banana. Banana. I get it though. I like the good country music in the song. No, I'm just like, damn, these guys feel all the feels. Like the lows at the lows and then they're high and then they're low again. Then they're back high. Then they're having sex with their ex, and then they're trying to move on. I'm like, brother, I feel you. All right, what do you collect? Comic books. Oh, vintage or? Yes, yes. I collect comic books when I was young. My mom used to give me like 25 cents to get out of her face. And I started, buying, his parents, yeah. and I started buying comic books. And then that thing just turned into boxes and boxes of comic books. Do you have a favorite one that you... I love the X-Men. I'm always an amazing Spider-Man guy. Um, I'm more loyal to Marvel than I am to DC. What were you afraid of as a child? I'm glad you asked. (laughs) Oh boy. Because I will tell you, because I'm still afraid of it to this day. There's two things. When I was a kid, it was vampires. I was deathly afraid of vampires. I watched Salem's Lot, and for a long time, I had lived my life thinking that vampires never ate children. And then I watched Salem's Lot, and this vampire bit this little boy on the top of his head, and blood went boom. And I was like, oh my God, all bets are off. Who knew? Like, none of us are safe. And so I used to sleep. I used to, I had a Bible in a wood case, and I'd bring a, pot, I'd bring a glass of water, and, I, and this is how I thought you blessed water. You, you just wave the Bible over it, and then it's holy. Like, that's how that works. Like, I'm like, it is, Ooh, right? That's right? Okay. And so I would I would bless a glass of water and then I would sleep with holy water next to my bed, waiting for a vampire to come and get me, and I'm just ha gotcha with my own homemade holy water. Yeah. I heard they're coming out with a new sales lot, so you get to nope. relive it. Totally good. <laughs> the second thing that I'm afraid of is squirrels. Well, that's a problem in this area. And anybody who tells me that they're not afraid of squirrels is a damn liar. Period. If a squirrel came running at you full speed, you wouldn't just stand there. No, you wouldn't. You have an experience with one. Yes, I did. And so, and frankly, anything that lives outside that's tougher than me, I give a little bit more respect to. <laughs> like, you're out there all the time in the elements. And if you're running at me, there's, you're determined. There's something wrong with you. What's been your favorite age so far? I like 50. I really do. There's something freeing about it. Like, 50 is seasoned, you know, still slightly immature. You definitely know, like, the thick, like, you see red flags now. Like when you were like when you're in your twenties and thirties, you don't see red flags. Those are just things that are hot and cool. Like they're like, oh my god, it's so sexy that she does that. You're like, no, brother, it's not. <laughs> no, she threw a knife at you. Oh. <laughs> not, not sexy. It's not because she loves you hard. What is my gig? I heard something about my gig on your okay. social media. My gig is a, it's an entertainment booking app that. Myself and my partner came up with because I started doing stand up again, and I've been doing stand up for like 26 years, right? The money's never changed. Oh. Never. It's never changed in 26 years. It's been the same. But bookers are taking like $100, $150, wow. right? Just to book the show. They don't have to leave the place. They don't have to leave their house. They send these guys for 200 bucks. I'll send them to the UP. $200. And these guys will do it because they have a dream, right? So they'll do this show for $200. And then the club owner will give that guy his $200. And then he'll also give the guy the $150 that the booker made. And I thought that was ridiculous. So you came up with something to get around that. So... What I wanted was I wanted venues to put that money that they were spending on these bookers into the show. Pay these guys more. You know, 
it shouldn't be two hundred dollars or two hundred and fifty, and then you have to send almost half of that as you look at that to somebody who just said you can go. So on my day, who can go on? What can they do? What do they do with this? Any entertainer from a musician to comedian, clown, mime, it's free for them to register. It's all free for them. Um, they can upload their bio, their links. Uh, as soon as a venue posts, an, posts a gig, anybody who is in that category will get a notification that that gig is available. And then they can reach out to the venue and then the venue will take it from there. It lays out exactly what comes with the show. Like if they provide lodging, if they provide food and beverage, blah, blah, blah. It's all there. And ordinary people can go on and access Yep. Ordinary people can go on. They can look and see what's going on around them the day of. We know Toledo is like a last minute town. <laughs> Always a last minute town. They wake up, they go, oh, okay, I'm gonna go to the grocery store, and then at six o'clock, and they go, I wanna go do something. That's me. And so you can look at that, and you can go, hey, I wanna go see a band, boom. And it'll show you all the bands that are right within your area, and That's it'll awesome. give you directions to that venue. I like it. Is it live now? No, it is uh, right now. We submitted it to Apple. Um, there is a beta version out, so if you wanna join up, and uh, before it goes live, like venues can join up. It only costs them to post uh, events and things like that. So. Sounds good. Well, we look forward to checking it out. All right, I think that's it. Thanks, Demetrius. Thank you. You guys were hilarious. And let me just tell you, Charles, I just couldn't, I can't get over the jokes. I mean, you were just one right after the other. It's hard to keep it, hard to keep you contained. You can't stop them. You can only hope to contain it. <laughs>